Well, hey guys, happy weekend. My hair is taking on life of its own per usual, so I'm just gonna buckle it into its seatbelt, as I say. I owe you guys a little bit of damage control because I often start these videos singing out a song that inevitably will get stuck in someone's head. And funny enough, I came across an article the other day, made me think of you all, giving you some tips on how to get rid of a pesky earworm. You know when a song goes through your head? You're supposed to walk either much slower than the beat of the song that's in your head or much faster. And apparently that will <clears throat> help you get the song out of your head. Alternatively, I guess if you sit down and actually play the song from start to finish, that will help because apparently part of what gets it stuck in your head is like some sort of subconscious need to complete the song, but maybe you don't know all the lyrics. So just listening to it can help up it go away and then after you do that if you I guess engage in a very mentally taxing task I don't know that doesn't sound like fun um, that requires more of your focus and attention it'll really purge the earworm I'm just gonna wash my face got my microfiber towel here so that I don't drip all over the place my forehead always catches a lot of water and then gets in my eyebrows. <laughs> so I have to make sure I get the excess drips off my forehead. All right, making my way through this, coming on next, the deep infusion toner. The other tip is to chew gum. Apparently that helps. But if it were me, I would just be chewing a little bit too aggressively. Funny enough, I used to chew gum all the time like all the time. And it would really cause a lot of irritation for my lips because with gum chewing, the flavorants in the gum can cause irritation to, especially the corners of your lips. Why do I feel like I have a hair on my face? Ugh, I hate that feeling. Aha, there you are. Uh, yeah, before, like before I was on YouTube, I was an aggressive, constant gum chewer. And it's good for your teeth, actually, to chew sugarless gum after a meal. That's what the dentist told me, at least. Um, but once I got on YouTube, the sight of gum in my mouth repulsed me. I could not handle it. Editing, and since then, I still chew gum from time to time, but maybe I'm chewing gum for 15, 20 minutes, and that's it. It's complete night and day. I mean, if you knew me pre-2016, I started my YouTube channel in the fall of 2016. If you knew me before then, I was like the gum goddess. <laughs> I had all kinds of gum. I always had gum with me. I was a person, you would ask for a piece of gum and I would give you two just in case you need one later. I was the gum goddess. I had, I loved gum. I mean, all types of flavors. It was, it was back to when extra had all of these like dessert gums. I would just get, get them at the grocery store, they had like a chocolate mint that I loved. I mean, I was always chewing on gum. As soon as I got on YouTube, I was like, that's a disgusting habit. Something just switched in my brain. I completely stopped chewing gum. You know, I chew gum like on an airplane to help with the pressure in my ears. Yeah, or, you know, I mean, I'm not completely opposed to it. It's not a disgusting habit, but having to watch yourself on camera with gum in your mouth, I don't know, it suddenly just repulsed me and that was the end of that. All right, last weekend we talked about this and I've been using it since. This is the Thank You Farmer SPF 50 Plus PA 4 Plus Sun Project Skin Relief Sun Cream. I've been, I've been enjoying it, it's a little heavy and my gosh, the weather lately, it's super humid and like uber moist. It's like mosquito paradise right now. Speaking of Speaking of mosquitoes, when I was I was in Costco, what was it last weekend? Um, I saw they had this mosquito light thing that you could buy, not the bug zapper, but it was this thing that I guess spewed out mosquito repellent. I don't believe those things really work. Maybe they do. DEET is your best bet for avoiding mosquito bites and long clothing. Mosquitoes love dark, like this, this is a totally, Mosquito, mosquito loving outfit right here. Black and dark blue. Because see, they, they like it because it looks like a dark, dark pond or something where they can go and lay their eggs or I don't know, they're attracted to dark colors. I have this theory that that's why 
in the South, like in South Carolina, those bright Lily Pulitzer fabrics are so popular. A, because they're lightweight, B, because they're festive, beach attire, and C, because to a certain extent, they're like a low-grade mosquito repellent. They hate bright colored fabrics. So word on the street, for those of you with diabetes, um, it sounds like the Ozembic shortage is easing up. So that's good. If you aren't aware, I mean, I'm sure most of you are aware, there have been serious shortages of diabetes medications. Um, and a lot of it, unfortunately, is due to the social media hype around these medications for weight loss and people wanting them to lose weight, where it created such a demand that patients who needed these medications for either diabetes or obesity were having serious issues accessing them. Not to mention these meds are super expensive. Part of it was increased demand, but another part of it was these companies also had supply chain issues as well. Uh, there, we've had issues in dermatology with lidocaine shortages. Um, they rely heavily on lidocaine in dermatology to do all sorts of procedures, you know? Uh, just inject a little lidocaine to numb the area. Also provides uh, hemostasis. So that was five scoops of beans ground to a fine-ish grind, fine course, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a barista, y'all, but I have perfected my coffee to my liking. So I pour the water in here. Swizzle, swizzle, swizzle. Um, and then I just pour, oh, you gotta look at this. I mean, to anybody who wants to hate on my coffee making skills, Look at that, look at that, look at that. It's like chocolate. Okay, then I let that incubate for six minutes, folks. And I put, <clears throat> I just rest the topper on top. I just fired up this frosted cupcake, limited edition. Why is it so dark? Um, Tuscany Candle needs to make this a permanent edition instead of limited edition. It's really nice. And it's lasted a really long time. Like it's a nice slow burn. Check out my little hanging measuring spoon slash scissor menagerie over here. It's working out well. This was supposed to be for hanging keys, but my measuring spoons do just well there on the magnet. All right, we're back in the kitchen. Timer just went off. Time to plunge and activate my personality. Yeah, the Ozempic thing is, is something, you know. The, the way social media has gotten, it's, it's, it's an interesting time, to say the least. The way, you know, medical or scientific advances however large or small they are, or just kind of get, I don't know, amplified to an unhealthy level on social media and misrepresented. And it's like, ugh, kind of frustrating, right? All right, it's about an hour later after we last left off. Coffee hasn't fully kicked in yet because I'm slurring my speech, but I need to update you guys on the fan situation. Don't hold your breath. I don't know why I just said that. Were you, was anybody contemplating not continuing to inhale, exhale? Like, I, I don't know, honestly, sometimes I just say things. If you're new here, I love my Vornado fan. I got it several years ago um, at Costco, of course. And I just like directing it to my treadmill here because when I run on the treadmill, it gets a little warm in this little nook. It doesn't have the best air circulation. So I have the fan blowing on me as I, as I run. Side note, this treadmill I've had since 2020. It was an Amazon purchase that has 
won me over fully because I use it daily. When I initially bought it, I thought maybe this will last me six months, a year. You know, I bought it when all the gyms closed down, including the one in my apartment. And man, this thing really has come like, this is the best treadmill I think I've ever had because it's really comfortable to run on, super low maintenance, reliable. I mean, like I said, I go, I use it every day. It needs a dusting. So there's that. This thing in the back, as a side note, is a um, rebounder. I used to have it in my living room and use it a lot, but I decided I couldn't take having it in there because it was sort of taking over the whole living room and now my filming setup. So I've, you know, put it to the side, but it's a really good rebounder if you're into that uh, by leaps and rebounds. I also got it on the Amazonian. Anyway, back to, back to the task at hand. <laughs> Love these fans, uh, and I bought it at Costco. So I told myself after I fell in love with this fan, the next time Costco had them, I was gonna repurchase one, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward to a few, like what, a month ago? I like, saw Costco got in Vornadoes again. So I purchased another one to have here in my, you know, going at the same time. This one, in contrast to the old one, has, has a remote control. But, but, I hate this. Why we need to see that, I don't know. I don't need that thing glowing in my face. When it comes to my bedroom, I like it pitch black at night and I have to have the fans going. This, I have to turn the, this fan off. This little light is gonna keep your brain awake, trust me. Or at least for me, I'm really sensitive to light in the room. It's gotta be pitch black in here. Drives me berserk. Like I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to get some electrical duct tape and cover that or something of that sort. And I don't know if that's gonna make it so that the remote no longer works, who knows? All that to say, I end up turning this one off at night, which is annoying because that's one of the reasons that I, bu I bought it, to have extra circulation, extra white noise, but I can't handle that, that annoying light. I thought that light was gonna go off, you know, when I bought it, I thought, you know, it was just to see what level you had the fan speed at, and then it would go away. <laughs> it persists, and it is bright. But in terms of a good quality fan, you can't go wrong with these Vornados. Like, if you don't care about this glowing light, you need a fan, say, somewhere else. Vornado all the way. Very good quality. Not sponsored by Vornado, nor am I sponsored by Costco. But these are good Costco purchases aside from the glowing light issue i just complained to you all about ad nauseum hey guys i'm here in walgreens i just finished up filming a video for you all that hopefully maybe it's up who knows and when you know it i came over here because i'm telling you these tumblers they just pull me in but i do not allow myself to buy them but what is this coffee then conquer mug i was attracted to this because it's hard to find a coffee mug that is large enough for my needs Aren't these pearlescent candles pretty? That'd be nice in an Easter basket. I feel very stealth in this black hoodie. It's good for sun protection on the arms as well. And it's got a hood, which I need because this time of year, there's lots of rain that intermittently appears. All right, so I'm on my way over to Sprouts, which sadly enough is closing. I'm so bummed because I love Sprouts. Nothing like taking a pause at a, at a light like pausing and looking both ways to drive people here nuts. They will slam on their horn as soon as you pause to look both ways to make sure there's no inc oncoming traffic. They get mad. It's like, how dare you? How dare you proceed with caution? Definitely a good time to stock up on coffee, although I just ordered my favorite um, Raven's Brew from iHerb, but have I tried Tony's before? This is a decent uh, 50 cents I don't know you I'm tempted by that packaging it's cute this is a good savings by from this forecast company is this the whole bean too yep hmm smells good maybe I should try this man was sprouts depressing I say depressing because like 80% of the shelves were completely bare in there. I did decide to get myself this bag of forecast coffee petal pusher, milk chocolate cherries. Don't mind if I do, sounded really good and it was a great price. Comes from the great state of Washington, I believe. So look forward to giving that a taste. While I was in Walgreens, I decided to purchase the social media frenzied L'Oreal 
Telescopic Lift Mascara from L'Oreal Paris. If you know about the social media drama surrounding this mascara, uh, that's kind of just basically what influenced me to try it. I want to see if it's actually any good. So I'm coming up on three months of using that Milani, those Milani mascaras I bought, which I love. Uh, so I'm going to give this a try, see how I like it. It's got like these two, two sides, I don't know. Yeah, telescopic lift. So I'll probably crack into that in the next couple of days and update you guys accordingly, but still loving the Milani ones. If I don't like this, I'm going back to those because they've been working out well. Well, hey guys, I am out of the shower, all moisturized. I am actually coming, well, I've got about this much left of the Gold Bond Adrian Retinol Overnight Body Cream. Uh, stay tuned, come, come December. I'll be gone till November. I'll be gone. I'm just kidding. Come, come December, 2023 budget friendly finds. I, I guarantee you, I, I want to say this is going to be there. I mean, somebody, you know, unless another, another brand comes out with a competitive product. I mean, there'll be a few in that lineup. Don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about anti-aging body products. Now today I was preparing for a video that I'm gonna do for you guys about the skin signs of high cortisol, stress hormone, important for your blood pressure, glucose, all sorts of things. I mean, pretty much every organ system and tissue in your body has, uh, cortisol is important for. Um, and you, your body tightly regulate, regulates how your, your blood levels of cortisol. But there can be certain medical conditions where you have way too much cortisol and it impacts, it shows up in your skin. One thing though that I remembered a couple of cases a few years ago, uh, so you can get high cortisol levels from taking um, medications, namely glucocorticoid medications, prednisone, prednisolone that you take by mouth. In some rare cases, you can get absorption of uh, glucocorticoids from topical steroid creams depending on the strength, the potency, where you're using it, to what surface area. It actually can be absorbed and have impacts on, on your health. I mean, it can actually be dangerous. That's why they're prescription only. Another source though is some dietary supplements marketed as adrenal support have been found to have uh, steroids in them. And so people have ended up taking these, you know, thinking that they're Good for them or whatever they're taking like prednisone not knowing it which can have a lot of serious consequences for your health uh, end up developing what's called Cushing syndrome and another another source uh, is actually those bleaching creams I've talked about this before I have a video as a side note on the harms of those mercury containing bleaching creams you've got to check that video out because this is a serious issue these skin bleaching creams that have high amounts of mercury you can get mercury poisoning from using them but a lot of these have super potent uh steroids in them steroid creams now steroid creams are not the devil they're they're actually great when used under doctor supervision but uh products that you actually can buy that have a cult you know hidden amounts of steroids, people have actually developed Cushing syndrome, um, a serious illness from using bleaching creams that have a hidden steroid in them that is not disclosed on the label. <sighs> so I'm almost finished with the Pyeongkang Yule Black Tea Enriched Cream. I have rather enjoyed this, as much as I hate to admit because it was super expensive. Several vlogs back, I shared with you guys, I purchased the good old Youth Firming Cream apricot collagen because I have enjoyed and I'm almost finished with the their vegan rice milk moisturizing cream and I've been dabbling in this one and it's quite good um it's quite good so but this one I, I think I paid like 30 bucks for it it was not inexpensive but I've liked it so far so I mentioned this a while back, but lately at night I've been doing my hair in these little double, a double twisty, like a double French twist. So it's kind of like a Princess Leia type thing. I just almost kind of fold the hair in half, twist it a bit, a bit, not tight or anything, and then just clamp it in place. It's it's very loosely clamped there. 
these claw clamps, they are so good. I've had these for a couple of years now. I got them on Amazon and they like don't break or anything, which for this type of claw clamps, I'm kind of hard on them. I use them pretty much every day. That says a lot. When it comes to acne, whether it be acne that you're having for the first time, say in your 30s or 40s, or you know acne that you've had since a teenager, um, one of the goals of treatment is obviously to clear the acne, but also to prevent scarring. So long as the acne is flaring, you can't really directly address the scarring because any existing acne is just going to make the scar treatment sort of futile, you know. Uh, you're gonna get, you take one step forward and the acne will bring you several steps back. But the good thing about a lot of acne treatments is they can, you know, by addressing the acne, they can not only prevent scars, but kind of start to address some scarring issues. A lot of acne scarring is actually, what you see on the skin surface is problem is, is dispigmentation. Either you have redness due to inflammation and blood vessels there, or you have hyperpigmentation. In some cases you have hypopigmentation. And sometimes, you know, patients, they'll be very distressed, obviously, about the acne scarring. And once the acne is under control, if you begin to sort of chip away at the dispigmentation with treatments, sometimes there's no underlying actual scar there, which is, you know, um, you know, but as you're chipping away at the dis dispigmentation, you might encounter, you know, true scar. It can be raised, it can be a frank keloid, or it can be depressed, like an ice pick scar, or a boxcar scar, a rolling scar. Check out my videos on acne scars. But you can see how the approach to acne scarring is first and foremost getting control of the acne. Oh man, and of course I've got to rub the backs of my hands together so that when I'm a 99 year old sassy granny and I whack my hand up against the wall, uh, I don't, you know, bruise myself, hopefully. I mean, you can't prevent every everything, but hopefully my skin will be a little stronger. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and if so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.